In my previous video, we took a look at the T962 solder reflow oven that's available on eBay from AliExpress and on Amazon. In this video, I'm going to look at the QS5100 solder oven. This one isn't so available in the United States. I had to buy this one from AliExpress directly from a seller in Hong Kong. I first learned of this oven in a video from Ian of Dangerous Prototypes. I understand he picked it up on the street in Shenzhen and it looks like a better unit than the T962 so that's why I wanted to take a look at it. So I'm going to start with an unboxing of the unit then I'll tear it down, I'll make one small change inside, I'll put it back together, get a thermocouple inside of the thing to measure temperature and I'll go through the first heating cycle. So here's the QS5100 just as it came from Hong Kong via DHL. Let's get inside this box now. Nice thank you card from the uh, seller. Very nice. Handwritten even. Start with the power cord. User manual. And the oven itself. Here's the data plate. It's peeling a little bit, but it does show 110 volt option. Going around the unit, here's the front. No vents on this side. Cooling fan on the back. No vents on this side. Vents on the bottom. Ball bearings feel a little bit rough. I see a lot of dust in there, but they'll probably uh, clean up okay once I get the dust out of there. Okay, that concerns me a little bit. Uh, these are ordinary drawer slides with uh, plastic parts in the bottom. I wonder how those are going to hold up after repeated heat cycles. I would think that plastic would start to get awfully soft uh, if this was used in a high-duty cycle. Okay, let's get inside this unit. I see three screws along the top on the back, and on this one, I don't find any screws underneath the front lip like I did on the T962. Okay, so all the insulation is wrapped in uh, some type of uh, plastic. Don't know what kind. That's plastic? No, it's a uh, woven cloth of some type. Hopefully high temperature. And presumably this is just uh, glass wool. Hopefully not anything bad like asbestos. It is gritty inside from uh, the insulation, I guess. Here are the electronics inside of the uh, top panel. All of the uh, wires are connected with pluggable uh, barrier terminal strips, which will make this a lot easier to take off. Looks like the main processor is an Atmel 18 Mega 64A, and there's a thermocouple interface over here. It's a Max 6675. That's an analog to digital uh, K-type thermocouple converter with uh, built-in cold junction compensation. So it's mounted right next to the barrier terminal strip, so that it can uh, measure the approximate terminal approximate temperature of the uh, cold junction and compensate for it. So unlike the T962, uh, there's no need to add another temperature sensor over here to add cold junction compensation. I would guess that this is probably an in-circuit programming header, although I haven't traced out any of the signals yet. So here's the board with the cabling unplugged. You can see the uh, switching transistor for the, uh, presumably for the IR tubes, is mounted on a nice aluminum heat sink. Then over here is the LCD controller with uh, four chip on board devices underneath uh, epoxy blobs. I'm putting on gloves because it's pretty dusty inside and I don't want to get uh, fiberglass all over my hands. Let's take a peek back here and see how the uh, input wiring looks. A 
lots of insulation inside there. All the connections here are actually made with insulated uh, quick, disconnect, quick disconnect terminals. Here's the ground lead. I'm going to have to do some more digging to see where that goes. There's the ground connection bolted to the uh, inner part of the chassis. Still doesn't have a lock washer, no kind of teeth or anything like that. But at least in this case, it's actually screwed to what looks like a, a weld nut or a rib nut, or possibly just uh, an extension of sheet metal inside there. So it's at least actually electrically connected to the case. I'm going to add a couple of tooth lock washers to this ground connection to make sure it can't shake loose. Much better. Okay, let's take the drawer out. Looks like I can just do this. There, right out. Looking inside the heating chamber, we can see the two quartz IR tubes and a single thermocouple hanging down between them. But in this case, the thermocouple isn't just poked through a hole in the top, it actually has a threaded bracket screwed into the top. Looks quite a bit nicer than the one in the T962. On second thought, the uh, slides are fairly well isolated inside all this metal here, so maybe they won't actually get too hot and start melting the plastic during a uh, high duty cycle use. Well, I'm going to give this a good vacuuming out and a good wiping out of all the grit that's inside, put it together, and then try its first thermal cycle. Okay, this is the same test setup that I use on the T962. I have a K-type thermocouple attached to a piece of scrap board and then taped down in the middle of the tray. This time I'll also add a watt meter and a stopwatch. Got my fire extinguisher handy. Time to turn on for the first time. There we go. I played with the unit for a little bit off-camera to get an idea of how the controls work. After you turn on the main power switch on the back, you turn on the electronics with this button here. It defaults to a text mode. There's also a graphical mode. You access the setup screen by holding down Run while turning it on. Now you can select English or Chinese and the graph mode, or the GROP mode. There are six different numbers to select. I don't know if those are different temperature profiles or what. I'm just going to select uh, one. Then I'll press run. It'll turn back off. And when I turn it on, it's in this graphical mode. Uh, those might be different temperature profiles. That would make sense. Let's try selecting a different one. The manual wasn't very clear about that. Yeah, those are different temperature profiles. Let's start with profile zero. Let's try out this profile here. You can, uh, Set the different phases, the preheat phase, 150 degrees C over a minute. The heating phase, the soldering phase, 235 C for 30 seconds. The keep temperature, I guess that's uh, this ramp right in there. and then the cool down. Okay, let's try our first temperature cycle. The fan just turned on for the first time.
There we go, about 11 and a half minutes. It's cycling the fan on and off for some reason. Board is cool enough to touch now. So let's see how the QS5100 stacks up against the T962. It does cost more. Uh, it's a little bit less available in the United States. I had to order from AliExpress. It still has a minor safety issue. It should have a uh, lock washer underneath the, uh, the grounding lug inside. And I think it should probably also have a bonding lead between the uh, top cover and the main chassis. But at least the grounding lead is actually electrically connected to the case, unlike in the T962. The construction quality is quite a bit better. There's no paper tape inside. No tape at all, in fact. There's no hot snot or hot melt glue. The uh, leads are all unpluggable from the main circuit card inside. The firmware is a lot better. There's no key bounce issues like there are in the T962 with its default firmware. And the thermocouple amplifier has cold junction compensation, which is uh, necessary for accuracy when using any type of thermocouple. Now, the board temperature still isn't perfectly controlled. It thought the board was uh, hotter than it actually was at low temperature, cooler than it actually was at high temperature. And I think a good modification to look into making would be to add, an, add the ability to have a thermocouple directly mounted on the board during the soldering profile. Overall, I like this unit a lot better than the T962. I'll continue experimenting with both of them, but I think this QS5100 is going to be doing most of my work for me. Okay, I hope this video was helpful for you. Thanks for watching. Bye.